You're starving, so you go to the local food court. Too late, it's already closed. Oh look, this kiosk is still working. There are three burgers left to choose from, but only one of them is safe to eat. Hit the like button if you can spot any poisoned food right away. The first burger was cooked five days ago, according to its tag. Um, no, thank you. The third one was prepared today, but there's a fly sitting on the meat. Flies can spread diseases. Only the second burger, which is packed in cling film, is a safe option. Does anyone have a better answer? Feel free to share. The next day, you go to the local beauty salon to get a haircut. Unluckily, one of these hairdressers is a maniac. Write your answer in the comments if you can guess who. It's the second hairdresser. The fire haircut technique is pretty normal these days. But he's also hiding an axe in his pocket, which is far from normal. Busted! Your haircut is done, and now it's time to chat with your buddies. They send you some selfies. Sally is getting ready to skydive. Bobby is taking a yoga class. And Caleb is riding an ATV through a desert. Who's least likely to survive? Give this video a thumbs up if you already know the answer. Although Bobby is twisted in an incredible position, his teacher is watching his back. Scorpions are no threat to Caleb unless he gets out of his vehicle. But take a look at Sally's picture. There's lightning in the sky. It's not safe to skydive in a thunderstorm. You're walking in the jungle and find three banana palms. One of them is poisonous. Can you guess which one? Okay, the first stack looks bad at first glance because its bananas have turned dark, but it doesn't mean that they're poisonous. The third palm has the fewest bananas, so probably many people were eager to eat them. But take a look under the second palm. Someone picked a banana, took a bite, and then just dropped it on the ground. That's suspicious. So, this is the dangerous palm. But if you have a different opinion, please let us know in the comments. In the evening, you go to the local carnival. Three ladies want to dance with you, but unfortunately, only one of them is a safe partner. Can you guess who's dangerous? Think carefully, and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. Although the first lady is wearing a cute rabbit mask, she's a thief. She's sneaking a phone from a guy in the crowd. Take a closer look at the third lady. A broken glass bottle sticks out of her pocket. It's not very safe to dance around her. Thus, only the second lady is safe. There are three routes you can take. The first path is covered with hot coals. The second with gross worms and toads. The third one with beautiful roses. Which path would you choose? Be sure to let us know in the comments. Hot coals can burn through your shoes and rose thorns can scratch your skin. So the second path is the best option. These creatures are no threat to humans. These two chefs cook over an open fire. One of them is in serious danger. If you already know who, hurry up to be the first to share it in the comments. Well, well, take a closer look at the first chef. His scarf is already smoking. It's about to burst into flames. Fire alarm! The next day, you go for a walk on the beach. There's an open shower on the shore. You spot three guys washing off the sand after swimming in the sea. Whom will you save?
The third guy is in danger. Take a look at the bottle he's using to wash his hair. It says bleach. Bad idea, buddy. Hit the like button if you nailed it. Before they made their wedding vows, Jenny had to say yes to a dress. So, she went to a couture store to check their wedding gown collection. She explained to the designer the style of the dress she wanted for her ceremony. The designer said he had just the perfect gown for her and would bring it to her if she answered his riddle correctly. He asked, if a gown takes an hour to dry, how many hours will it take six dresses to dry? It'll still take one hour because they'll all dry at the same time. Ben had one last item to buy on his wedding shopping list, and it was what fastens two people yet touches only one. Can you figure out what it is? It's a wedding ring, of course. Ben headed to a jewelry store to get something blue for his bride. The store owner showed him three different wedding rings with blue gemstones. Which one should he buy? The second ring has an engraving inside, so it must have belonged to someone else before. The gemstone on the third ring has a tiny crack in it. That can only mean it's made of glass or even plastic. So, Ben should buy the first ring with a sapphire. Next, Ben and Jenny were going to send out invitations. One print shop offered them three different versions of invitations. Which one should they choose? Do you remember the name of the hotel they booked? It was Sunrise Lodge, but the first invitation says Sunset Lodge, so this one won't do. And on the third invitation, their names are printed as Benny and Jen. That's not our couple, so they should choose the second invitation. Before the wedding, three of their friends paid them a visit. One of them brought a painting as a wedding gift, but all three claimed that they were the artist who had created it. Two of them must be lying. Can you figure out who the actual artist is? Take a look at the signature on the painting. It says, Denise. Now look at the third friend's necklace. It has the letter D. So she must be Denise, the artist who painted the painting. It was finally the day of the wedding, and Ben and Jenny's guests started to arrive. However, the hotel security spotted three suspicious-looking people who could be uninvited. Take a look at these three guys. Can you tell which one is not supposed to be at the wedding? Do you see the hotel wristbands that say Ben and Jenny that the second and the third guys are wearing? That can only mean they are actually invited. So it's the first guy who's crushing the wedding. Sorry, dude, no free drinks for you. After the vows were exchanged, it was time to party. As Ben and Jenny were dancing, someone spilled their drink on Jenny's dress, but no one saw who it was. Jenny spotted three people who could have done it. Take a look at them. Can you tell who ruined her dress? The first guy has spots on his shirt that resemble stains from the spilled drink, but they are actually part of the pattern, so it can't be him. The third lady looks clean, but the hem of the second lady's skirt looks dirty, so it must be her who did it. After the ceremony ended, Ben and Jenny wanted to take a photo to capture the moment forever. But take a look at it, there's something strange about it. Can you spot what it is? Can you see a woman hiding behind the trees, watching them? She is wearing a witch hat, but it's a wedding ceremony and not a costume party. Creepy. Right before leaving, Jenny suddenly vanished. 
Then the witch suddenly appeared in front of Ben and said, You may only kiss the bride if you figure out with whom you really tied the knot. Ha <laughs> ha! Then two Jennies appeared in front of Ben. Can you tell which one is his real wife? Remember the wedding photo? The Jenny on the left is the real one because her tattoo is on the same side as in the photo. Now that Ben and Jenny's wedding was over, phew, it was time for them to pick a honeymoon destination. They went to a travel agency to book a tour. The travel agent offered them three different holiday destinations, Ibiza, Cannes, and the Caribbeans. Which one should they go to? Have you noticed the weather forecast on TV in the office? It states that the weather in Ibiza is going to be windy in the upcoming days, and in Cannes, it's going to be rainy, so they should pick the Caribbeans and enjoy the sun. The travel agent said she could upgrade their plane tickets to business class for free. It would be her wedding gift to them. But they had to crack this riddle. What can travel around the world while staying in a corner? It's a stamp. While Miss Virginia Dell was away on her summer vacation, her house got robbed. Three people were caught on the security camera and they became the main suspects. Ayla, Virginia's best friend, said, Uh, I've been coming to pick up mail. Sophia, the housemaid, said, I've come every Wednesday to clean the house. And Danica, the gardener, said, I come every Friday to take care of the garden. Who robbed Miss Dell? It must have been Sophia, the housemaid. She said that she cleaned the house every week. But look at the house. It's very dusty. She's shady, and she must be the main suspect. Last Friday, Mary sneaked out to a party without asking her mom's permission. Her mom found out about it and grounded Mary for a month. No friends, no parties. Two weeks after that, there was another party, and Mary couldn't miss it. The morning after the second party, Miss Roberts walked into Mary's room and asked her what she'd been doing in the evening. I was solving my new puzzle, the girl answered. Mary got grounded for another month. Why? Take a look at the puzzle. She's barely started it. It doesn't look like an evening-long activity. Jane was a straight-A college student, but her friends hadn't heard from her in a week. When she didn't show up for an exam, her best friend got concerned. She came to visit, but Jane wasn't home. So, she reported that Jane had been kidnapped. There were three suspects, all of them Jane's ex-boyfriends. Michael, Miguel, and Daniel. All of them denied being in any contact with the girl. Who should be arrested? The note on the fridge is a clue. It looks like a recipe, but it's not. It's the number of letters you should take from each word. Two-fourths of milk gives us M-I, then we have C-H, then A, E, and L. It seems that Michael has something to do with Jane's disappearance. I'll be showing you combinations of emojis, and your task is to guess what fruit or vegetable they stand for. Here's the first, very simple one. What do you think it is? So there's an egg and a plant. So, of course, it's an eggplant. The next one. This time, it's not so obvious. Do you have any ideas? It's a ladyfinger. Good job. Off to the next one. I wonder if you can get this one right. A car and a rat. A carrot, of course. Now let's add some letters to help you. 
What about this one? What's your bet? O and a leaf. That's an olive, of course. Okay, here's the next one, and I know you'll get it right. Some sugar, or rather something sweet, and a potato. Of course, it's a sweet potato. Okay, now it's getting a bit more complicated. What's your call? There are two types of people who love it and those who can't stand it. It's cauliflower. Okay, and here's the last one for you. Q, a comb, and a bear. Cucumber. Great job with these ones. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She was wandering around until she found the road leading to the house of a witch, her old friend. Esme approached the house, but the witch wasn't there. <laughs> Instead, there were four open portals. On the table, Esme found the witch's to-do list. Can you figure out which portal the witch entered? The first two tasks on the witch's to-do list are completed so she's most likely left to catch some frogs. The number in brackets must mean the number of sides each portal has. 10 is a star, 3 is a triangle, 4 is a square, and a 0 is a circle. To catch some frogs, she must have used the portal that looks like a square. Cindy was a kind and beautiful girl in her junior year. Two best friends, Dylan and Kobe, wanted to ask her out to prom. So the guys decided to ask Cindy's best friend which of them likes Cindy more. The girl didn't want to share her best friend's secrets, but she gave them a hint. Cindy loves pizza, but she can't stand burgers. She likes to go to the pool, but never goes to the gym. Her favorite animal is the llama, but she's afraid of zebras. Which of the boys does Cindy like? Cindy's friend wanted to give the guy a clue, so we have to look for some pattern. All the things Cindy likes have double letters in them. Dylan has the double L in his name, so he must be the one Cindy likes more. Kate woke up in a dungeon and couldn't remember what had happened to her. The place didn't look safe, so she decided to get out. The door was open and she left the room, walking down the hallway. Several minutes later, Kate stopped in front of two elevators and one door with an exit sign on it. Is it the way out? In any case, the door was locked and required a password. Can you guess what the password is? Pay attention to the numbers on the elevators. They say 13 and 11, so the password must be 1311. Sheila participates in a beauty pageant. The next catwalk will take place in 30 minutes. Sheila leaves her stuff in the dressing room and goes outside to talk on the phone. After that, she returns and sees that someone has torn her costume. Sheila gets furious and questions her rivals. Millie says, I was getting my makeup done, so I sat in my chair motionless and I couldn't look around. Chelsea says, I was in a toilet. I think I ate something wrong for lunch. And Isabella says, I was outside the dressing room filming stories for my subscribers. Who is lying? Millie. She said she got her makeup done, but why did she ruin it by putting on a face mask? Sheila goes to the storage room to find a new dress. Suddenly, the door slams shut behind her. Oh, no. She needs to enter an eight-letter password to open the door. Sheila needs to be on the stage in five minutes. Can you help her crack the code? This picture on the wall is a hint. 
Sheila needs to enter paradise. Sheila opens the door and meets face to face with creepy rats. She runs away and gets lost in the basement. Sheila finds these three doors leading to the stage, but each door is hiding some danger. There are broken wires and a puddle of water on the floor behind the first door. There's a scorpion behind the second door waiting to bite Sheila. And there's a magical portal leading to the top of a mountain behind the third door. Can you help Sheila make the right choice? She should choose the first door. There's enough space. Sheila can crawl underneath the wires. Sheila enters the stage and spots three uh -oh. weird details in the auditorium. Can you see them too? Take a closer look at this lady. She's holding a book upside down. This musician is playing the violin without any strings. Also, there's a panda among the viewers. Sheila becomes a beauty queen. She gets a diamond tiara and a paycheck. She goes backstage, but suddenly all lights in the building go out for a few seconds. When the lights turn on again, oh, no. Sheila sees that someone has stolen her tiara. She questions three rivals. Zoe says, I don't want your cheap tiara. My dad is a billionaire. Jasmine says, Someone pushed me in the dark and scratched my dress. Rachel says, You must have dropped it on the floor. Look better. Who stole the tiara? Zoe, it's hidden under her diamond necklace. The next day, Sheila wakes up in a creepy castle. A wicked witch turned her into a monkey. To break the black magic, Sheila needs to use a spell. But the spell book is locked in a box. The lock requires a six-digit code. Can you help her open the box? There are exactly six candles on the shelf above the box. It's a hint. Each candle has a particular number of dots. So the code is 243. Three, six, two, one. There are four big houses in Sheila's neighborhood. All four are standing in one row and they have different colors. Red, green, white, and blue. Mrs. Jones's house is somewhere to the left of the green house. The third house in the row is white. Mrs. Snake owns a red house. And Mrs. Crystal doesn't live at either end of the row. But she lives somewhere to the right of the blue house. Meanwhile, Mrs. Dillon lives in the fourth house. And the first house isn't red. Can you decide who lives where and what the color of each person's house is? From the clues, we know that the first and the third houses can't be red. Mrs. Dillon lives in the fourth house. Therefore, Mrs. Snake, who owns the red house, can only live in the second. Since Mrs. Crystal doesn't live at either end, she must live in the third house, which is white. Mrs. Jones's house is somewhere to the left of the greenhouse, which means that Mrs. Dillon lives in the fourth house. As for Mrs. Jones, she lives in the first house, and it's blue. Can you spot a fake teacher? The guy on the left isn't a real teacher, he's an actor. Take a closer look. There's a rec camera icon at the top of the screen. Two friends want to cross a river. The only way to get to the other side is by boat. But this boat can only take one person at a time. The boat cannot return on its own, and there are no ropes or any other similar tricks. Yet both guys manage to cross the river using the boat. How is that possible? The guy started on the opposite banks of the river. Josh and Bob are twins. Josh lives with his wife, and Bob lives alone. 
Can you guess which one is Josh? It's the first guy. He has a pair of toothbrushes in his bathroom, while Bob only has one. Let's train your eyes a bit. Here are Halloween emojis. All of them but one has a pair. Can you find the one that doesn't have a pair? Great job! Here it is! Okay, one more time. Now there are even more emojis. Do you see the unique one? Here it is. Good! Now let's proceed. A month before Halloween, Daphne moved into a new modern house that was built in the early 2000s. It was a great house, but Daphne got it for a very low price because it was believed to be haunted. The girl didn't believe in that, so it didn't bother her one bit. On Halloween night, she returned home after midnight. When she walked into her room, she saw a ghost floating there. The ghost looked at Daphne and said, You know what? You can't live here. It's my house. I've lived here for a hundred years, and you're making me uncomfortable. <laughs> Daphne said that the ghost was lying. Why? The house was built in the early 2000s, so it's barely 20 years old. The ghost couldn't have lived there for a hundred years. That's right, ghosts lie. It is Halloween night, full moon, all the creepy things, but Eslin went to an abandoned spooky house in the woods alone. As soon as she walked in, the door behind her got shut and locked. She wandered around the house and found three doors leading out, but they didn't seem safe. Behind the first door, there was a werewolf. Behind the second door, there was a zombie. Behind the third door, there was a ghost. Which way is safer for her to choose? Eslin should definitely choose the third door. Ghosts may be spooky, but they can't do her any real harm. Of course, Eslin wasn't the only one who went to the house that night. Another student, Colton, dressed in the silver armor of a knight, decided to explore the spooky house too. Just like with Aslan, the door got shut behind him right after he stepped into the house. He found three ways out too. Behind the first door, there was a vampire. Behind the second door, there was a huge dragon who hates strangers. Behind the third door, there was a huge cyclops that would crash anyone who walks in. Which way should Colton choose to stay safe? Luckily for him, he is dressed as a knight in silver armor. Vampires are afraid of silver, so the first way is totally safe for Colton. On Halloween night, Kennedy wanted to spend the evening with her boyfriend, but her dad was against her dating anyone. To go around it, she lied that she was going to trick-or-treat with her friends and promised to be home by midnight. She returned at 11.30 p.m. Yet her dad got mad at her and demanded to tell him where she really was. Wow, how did he understand that Kennedy didn't go trick-or-treating? She returned with an empty candy basket. Outside of town, hidden in the woods, there is a house where a group of friends live. A mummy, a mermaid, a ghost, a werewolf, and a witch. Every Halloween, they eat candy. There are five creatures, but this year they only have four chocolate bars, and they don't know how to split them equally. Maybe you have an idea? They should split each one of the four bars into five pieces, and then each creature gets a piece from each bar. This way, everyone will eat exactly four pieces of chocolate. 
Now that monsters and humans live next to each other, let's try to identify who is who. I will be showing you photos, and your task is to find a monster in each photo. Here's the first one. Can you find the monster? Look, this guy's skin is green. He's definitely not a human. Here is the next photo for you. Be attentive. Do you see someone who is not a human here? This girl in the swimming pool is a mermaid. <laughs> Good job! Okay, here's one more. It's quite hard, but I believe in you. Who do you think is not a human here? Look, this woman doesn't cast a shadow. Now this is not normal for a human being, so she must be some other creature. Great job! Here's another one for you. Which one do you bet isn't a human? This person is carrying a wand. She must be a witch. This is probably the hardest one. You have to keep your eyes wide open. A photo of a local cafe. Do you see something suspicious? Look, there's a glass of blood in the air, as if someone's drinking it. It must be the vampire who's drinking it. But the vampire isn't in the photo because they can't be photographed. Ugh, technicalities. Dana is a swimming champion, preparing for her competitions on Monday. 24 hours before the big day, she disappears. Nobody can find her, and the police suspect three other swimmers. Hmm. Hannah says she hasn't spoken to Dana since their last practice. Ashley explains that she invited Dana for lunch on Saturday, but the missing swimmer refused because she was getting her hair done for the competition. Hmm. And Melanie says that she spoke to Dana the night before. Dana told her she was feeling anxious before the race. One of the swimmers is lying. Who is it? Ashley knows where Dana is. It doesn't make sense for a swimmer to have her hair done before a competition. Laura was walking home from work when she heard screams coming from a nearby house. She immediately rushed in to help. She followed the voice and it guided her to a basement. As soon as she walked in, the door slammed shut. Three portals opened in front of her. Only one of them led to safety. The first portal was filled with giant venomous spiders. In the second portal, there was a huge suspended rock that was supposed to crash down the moment someone stepped in. In the third portal, seven hungry crocodiles were waiting for their next victim. Can you help Laura choose the right portal? Laura should pick the second portal. She can throw her shoes inside, wait for the giant stone to fall to the ground, and make her way around it. Daniel is a sailor on a large cruise ship. One day, the captain asked him to go to the hold and get some supplies. But as the man was walking down the ladder, it broke. Try as he might, he couldn't get out. Sometime later, he discovered there was a hole in the side of the ship. More and more water was getting inside through this hole. How can Daniel get out? can put on one of the life jackets that are in the room and wait for the water to fill the hole. This water will lift him and he'll be able to push the door open. Look at this man and three women attentively. Can you figure out which one of them is his real wife? It must be the girl on the left. Look, unlike the other two girls, she has nothing in her hands. 
At the same time, the man is holding a purse, which, if we're honest, doesn't match his style at all. Ben and his girlfriend Amelie went to explore a cave and got lost. After some time, they came across two people, a guy and a young woman. The man, bearded and rough looking, had a shovel in his hand. I've been stuck here for a week. I know how to get to the surface, but I need your help. Come with me. The young woman exclaimed, Don't trust him. He's a criminal. Oh no. Follow me. I've been stuck here for way longer than him, but I think I know where the exit is. Who should Ben and Amelie believe? Ben and Amelie decided to follow the man. If the girl had been in the cave for so long, why did she look so tidy and have fresh flowers in her hair? Look at this image. Can you figure out who came from the past? It's this guy. Take a closer look at his chest. He's wearing a shirt frill. Those were popular in the 19th century. How about this picture? Who's from the past? I bet it's this young girl. Look at her weird hat. And now, will you be able to spot the time traveler? It's this lady. Have a look. She's wearing clogs. Nature photographer Lydia was out taking pictures of trees and flowers in the park. She stopped when she noticed some weird chemical smell in the air. She took photos of all three factories in the area. When Lydia looked at the images later, she immediately realized which factory emitted toxic gas. Can you figure it out too? It's not the first factory, it seems abandoned. The second one is surrounded by trees and flowers. It means the smoke coming out of its funnels is safe. It's the third factory that's the toxic one. The trees around it look dry and unhealthy, and the flowers have turned black. At the airport, a furious traveler claimed that the contents of his baggage had disappeared. When I got my suitcase, it was empty. I want compensation. After checking the passenger's info, an airport worker found out that he had indeed left London with a heavy suitcase. And now his bag was empty and a bit wet. But don't you think the whole situation is a bit suspicious? Hmm. Can you figure out what probably happened here? The passenger left London with a suitcase full of ice. During the flight, the ice melted and the water leaked out, and the man demanded compensation for his lost belongings. Police officer Dave received a call late at night. A famous chemist went missing from his lab. After searching the lab thoroughly, Dave found a note with ransom numbers scribbled on it. The note read 26 3 58 28 27 57 16. Based on the note, Dave managed to find the scientist and arrest the criminals who had taken him. What was written in the encrypted note and how did Dave understand it? The chemist is smart. Each number in the note corresponds to an element in the periodic table. So the element that corresponds to 26 is Fe, iron. Number 3 is Li, lithium, and 58 is Ce, cerium. If you use this logic, you can figure out that the first line spells Felice, and the numbers in the second line stand for Nicholas. After figuring out the names, Dave tracked the men down and arrested them. Helena finally got herself a new guitar. She wanted to play it right away, but she had to go to school. She locked the instrument inside her room and left. When she got home in the evening, the guitar was gone. She knew it must have been one of her family members, as they always played pranks on one another. 
So she questioned each one of them. Helena's mother said she hadn't even seen the guitar the girl had bought. Her dad said that he had seen it when he passed by Helena's room, but he swore he hadn't done anything to it. Helena's brother said he hadn't gone upstairs the whole day, so he hadn't seen the guitar either. Helena solved the mystery instantly. Can you figure it out? Her dad was lying. He said he'd seen the guitar when passing by the girl's room, but that's impossible. Helena locked the door when she left. A bank was robbed by masked strangers. One of the robbers asked the teller to give them all the money hidden in the bank safe. But suddenly, the teller's phone rang. It was his mother. The robber told the guy to pick up the phone to avoid arousing suspicion. On the phone, the teller asked, Is there an emergency, mother? Call me when you get home and I'll help you with the dinner. Then he hung up. Five minutes later, while the robbers were still in the bank, the police arrived at the crime scene. How did the police know about the robbery? The teller was smart. While he was speaking on the phone with his mother, he pressed the mute button while he was saying some of the words. So what his mother heard on the other end of the line was, emergency, mother, call help. On the outskirts of a town, there was a haunted house. A group of friends decided to check it out. They went there at night, but as soon as they got there, one of the friends refused to go inside and tried to stop the others. But they just laughed and left him behind. There were terrible crashing sounds coming from the house, and then everything went still. John never saw his friends again. How did John understand that there was something seriously wrong with the house? John was very attentive. He noticed that there was lots of footprints leading towards the house, but none going away. A famous hotel has seven floors. Five people are staying on the first floor. Eight people are staying on the second floor. Eleven people are staying on the third floor, and so on. Each next floor has three more people living there than the previous one. Which floor calls the elevator most often? The first floor. Any person staying on a floor other than the first has to call the elevator to reach their destination. In a small town, three teachers asked for sick leave on the same day. Janet said she had got into a car accident and broke her leg. Now she was having difficulty walking with the cast and all. Emma complained she'd had a very unfortunate workout and injured her neck. She couldn't even turn her head. And Tina said that she'd fallen from her bike and hurt her arm. One of the teachers is lying. Can you tell who? It's Janet. She claims she's having difficulty walking with the cast, but she doesn't even have crutches. You wake up and find yourself trapped in a room with four doors in front of you. You hear a monster coming, so you check the door quickly. The leftmost door has a sign on it saying, Take the door on the right to break free. The second door also has a sign saying, It's the right door. The third door has a sign, Freedom is just right in front of you. And the last door has a sign saying, don't trust the signs. Which door should you choose? Well, there's a little bit of wordplay here. Let's see why. The first door says to take the door on the right. The second one says it's the right door. Not the correct door, but the door on the right. The third door says Freedom is just right in front of you. That just doesn't make any sense, does it? You can interpret this statement as pointing at the door just on your right. Well, that's it. It's the last door. 
It does tell you not to trust the other signs, but it doesn't tell you that they're false, does it? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.